now we have Rahul Chada. Uh, Chadol. He's head of Asia Pacific Investment Strategy at Mirai Asset Global Investment. It's good to see you, Rahul. I'm curious your reaction to this rate cut and how you think it sets us up for Friday trading across the Asia Pacific. I think first reaction from the market would be positive, but beyond that, a week from now, as the dust settles, market again looks at the data which comes from the Chinese economy, and we've seen um, in in recent months the data has been soft. And typically, what happens with the rate cut is a rate cut takes its own time to feed through the economy. So it probably takes three months. We'll have another cut on that. So I think. Post the initial euphoria, market would look at again the data which comes from the economy. Perhaps mirroring what happened in the U.S. because overnight we saw the Dow, the S&P 500, an initial pop for stocks on the back of this China decision, but then uh, that didn't couldn't sustain itself at least on the S&P 500 uh, and the Nasdaq. Do you think this suggests the fact that they came out with this rate cut in the middle of the trading week or at the end of the trading week, not on the weekend, ahead of the data this weekend, that things are much worse in China than perhaps uh, we think? See, we can speculate about it, but again, it's anybody's guess. But clearly, uh, because the inflation is going down, and that was the key concern for central bankers around the world in keeping rates steady or hiking rates over the last three years, that, that fear is unfounded. I think the fear now is of growth, and which is why we've seen RBA in Australia Indian Central Bank likely to cut rates over the next two weeks. We've seen rate cuts from PBOC. So clearly, I think we, we'll see rate cuts as a trigger for the economy, but there, there is a distinct slowdown in the economy. And like the way I said, it may take one or two rate cuts for the momentum to come back. Ben Bernanke testified uh, yesterday in, on Capitol Hill, and he left the door open, of course, to further stimulus, perhaps another round of quantitative easing. Does that provide a buying opportunity for investors? Do these rate cuts provide buying opportunities? I think we've got a bigger issue, and the bigger issue is what happens with Spanish banks' recapitalization. How do the mm. Germans react to it? Uh, that is something which is weighing on the minds of investors. If you look at valuations, valuations for MSCI Asia Pacific at around 1.6, 1.7 times, book, a fairly reasonable factor in a lot of these slowdown concerns. We've looked at key commodities. They've corrected by anywhere around 15 to 20 percent. So central banks have all the more ammunition to go and cut rates. but. Uh, the European crisis, particularly the Spanish bank recapitalization, is one single event where you don't want any policymakers to do an error. And should that happen, I think Spain is not like Greece, it's much larger. So that can really have a serious ripple effect in the region. In terms of investor strategy, uh, you know, we've seen people uh, not taking on risk at the moment. How, how are you allocating your portfolios and, and how are you investing in this environment? In our, in our portfolios also, we've kind of a cut down on risk. So all through this year, we've been focused more on companies with a high earnings probability. I mean, what we try to do is you look at companies with a 15 to 20 percent earnings growth with an 80, 85 percent probability, and you try not to buy it at exorbitant valuations because these are essentially consumer companies, and you have some of them at 30, 35 times. So you try to buy them at reasonable valuations, and that is the way to go because we have deleveraging happening in the developed world, developing or emerging markets. We've got growth slowing down. So one needs to be in places where there is growth certainty at reasonable valuations and a reasonable dividend yield also. I noted that you are uh, overweight China financials. You remain underweight, but you're, you're, you're overweight in terms of philosophy. I think what, what we see uh, at, at China financials is if you look across the region, um, I mean, uh, leave aside India and some ASEAN countries, but the credit growth rate still remains healthy compared to what we see in a Taiwan or a Korea or Australia for that matter. Uh, you, you look at the ROEs uh, for, for these financials, they're still in excess of 20%. They're well capitalized and they're trading at 1.1 1.2 1 times forward book. So a lot of negative news is factored in. So unless or until one believes uh, that uh, there is going to be a hard landing in, in um, China, which, which is not our base case. I think China financials look uh, attractive from a risk reward perspective. On this. Even though lending growth this year likely not to meet meet targets. But that, that's their in valuations. That's, the, that's Sorry, clearly yeah. there okay. in 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.2 times book which we have for these banks. So, you know, we're not seeing a huge amount of conviction, conviction in the markets. Uh, wh what do you want to see before you, you do have that conviction? Uh, in terms I of think essentially uh, two problem. things. Uh, first is uh, we want to see some bit of a resolution to the European crisis, particularly the Spanish crisis. The Germans coming around and saying that, okay, we are okay with this and then we recap the bonds and move on with that. Uh, data from Europe is expected to be uh, to be weak, but like the way we saw last time around, what typically happens is as, as crude corrects and as we go into uh, July or, or the, let's say autumn, we, we again see retail consumer spends improving both in U.S. and rest of the region because a part of that consumption which was being consumed, uh, taken up by crude comes to other things. So data is expected to improve in coming quarters. Um, the only thing is this, this single even risk which, which hangs in Europe, you want it to be behind. 
and uh, interest rates cuts which would happen over the next couple of quarters would work their way through the economy through better demand momentum and valuations are reasonable so valuations are factoring a lot of these concerns Rahul, I hope your uh, optimism proves correct as we go through uh, the coming quarters. We have to leave it there, but it's good to see you, and thanks for coming on the show this week.